Hey, hey, you all. Here's uh, just an entry, kind of what I use, some ketchup cups. That's pro alcohol, obviously, to keep everything nice and clean. I have a laser pointer there. You can't really see it, unfortunately. I just happen to have this on hand. You don't have to have it. Uh, I think it's helpful if you do, but you could do without it. 400 milliliters of water, some light caro syrup, or light corn syrup, I'm sorry. Um, this one has vanilla in it. I heard you're not supposed to, but it's what I have. Some potato flakes, add some carbohydrates for the mycelium to feed off. And then your agar agar powder to kind of give you that gelatin substance. And based on Philly Golden Teacher, the 321 uh, proportion is what I'm using here. Uh, I'm doing a triple batch, so that's why you'll see um, the higher numbers. 12 grams of potato flakes going in here. I tried to measure it out ahead of time, and as you can see, I was somehow a little off, so fill in there. You know, overall, this was an easy project. I think I probably spent an hour doing it, all, all said and done. Um, as you saw in the intro, produced 25 cups. Uh, I probably could have got that a little higher, a little lower. I'm gonna be honest, towards the end of, I didn't need that many, and so towards the end, I probably started dumping them a little heavier than I should have. Uh, four grams of this, or sorry, eight grams of the agar agar here. Um, I bought this off Amazon. I know that Philly Golden Teacher uses the telephone. I probably should have. I just, I wasn't sure at the time, so this is what I bought. Um, and that was before I found Philly Golden Teacher's video on how to make agar agar and saw that he used the telephone. So obviously it's good enough, it's cheap. So I would suggest you stick with that if you can. Uh, or stick with something cheap, right? You don't need anything really expensive for the agar is what I'm saying. Caro. Uh, I, it's basically like corn syrup is what I needed, but unfortunately the one I have here has vanilla in it. That's not supposed to be exactly helpful, but it was what I had, and so it's what I'm going to use. Uh, it seems a little bit hard to buy a full bottle of um, light corn syrup when I'm going to use four grams. So a bottle of that would last me 30 years. I use 400 milliliters of water. I use distilled water here. Uh, you don't need to. It just was something that I had on hand. Might as well use it. Uh, one of the things that I should point out is some people say you should add the water before the caro, or before the light corn syrup and mix those up and get a good breakdown and then uh, start to heat it on the burner and um, then add your your four grams of um, light corn syrup. Probably a good idea because I did have some issues with it clumping up here and stuff like that, but this worked. And just mix it up, kind of get it stirred up as best you can. For the water, you don't have to use anything special like that. I just have, I bought one of those because I liked it. <laughs> my hand sticking in there was actually me checking to make sure I'm not melting my camera as uh, I'm trying to warm this up. It's pretty hot above there. Uh, be very careful here on the heat. You know, um, make sure you keep stirring it and everything like that. That light corn syrup will kind of try to turn into caramel if you, will caramelize if you don't uh, really make sure you take care of it. In fact, I had a little bit of it caramelizing there, but you don't really see it. Uh, pour it into your jar. Uh, again, I'm using a bottle for it, but you can just use a standard jar. Um, putting the lid on it when you get to it. I scraped this pretty solid, but you, I don't know. I just, I wanted to get it all. I felt like this substance in here might matter, uh, given that it's going to probably affect the uh, density of the, the gelatin and, and how well it sets so I want to make sure that I kind of got every recipe part I could there and 
and then it wasn't in the uh, intro video but I am going to use some food coloring it's just standard food coloring that you'd use in any kitchen recipe nothing special I chose red uh, I did six drops in this in this batch and so produced a nice red color I, I bought some plates with agar agar pre-done and they were red I found them very easy to use very easy to see what's going on so I just stuck with that color just make sure you get it mixed in there here you can see I'm tightening and, and untightening lid so I'm about to put in the pressure pot I'm trying to figure out that right balance between the lids on but it's not screwed all the way down it's loose enough that as the uh, pressure expands inside the bottle that things can move out. Uh, I don't know if you need the foil here. I chose to use it uh, again. It's what I used for the liquid culture or well what you're supposed to use for liquid culture. I'm going to be honest. I didn't use it on mine. My liquid culture turned out fine, but just trying to keep that consistency of moisture not going in there. I kind of cheated before I started. I started preheating my pressure pot here so it was ready to go as soon as I uh, have the food coloring in there good use of time I guess uh, my pressure pot doesn't have a PSI gauge on it I know that's not ideal but I'm learning it and this is what I started off with uh, as you can see it's at zero it since it was preheated it will actually heat up pretty quick you get the nice flow of steam coming out that means that it's you know getting ready to be set to the correct level that you want and so here I'll flip the gauge to three. Um, I'm actually checking my lock real quick, making sure before I engage the uh, three setting or 15 PSI that the lid is locked in place. And so I don't create a pressure problem. Um, it, it has a pin on the other side that will lock the lid if the pressure is high. Yeah, so I get it up to the level three again, that's 15 PSI, cook it there for 30 minutes and then turned it off and let it cool. I think it only, took um, I'm gonna say 20 minutes to cool down so I guess my original time estimate of an hour is probably off I I did this you know I walked away for 30 minutes and did something else while this was going I set a timer and obviously came back uh, as soon as I turned it off I set a timer for 20 minutes came back and checked it it's nice and hot so make sure you use you know something to protect your hand as you pull it out at this stage, if you were to pour it directly into your ketchup containers, ketchup cups, uh, it would melt them. So we have to let it cool down. Uh, Philly Golden Teacher seems to think 160 is good. I tried it, it worked. So I didn't melt anything. Um, I also, you know, see, as you can see, as you pull it out of there, it, it's nice and warm. Uh, I also used the oven tech thing here. so. When I turned off the pot, I opened the oven and put it to 250 bake, let it preheat, and then I'll put a rack across here. Uh, I tried it first, kind of stuck under the uh, burners there, but it didn't work. So I wound up here with a tea kettle on there full of water. That was enough to offset the weight of the cups and everything like that uh, because my door doesn't come up high enough to, to sit it on. So I had to counterbalance the weight. Uh, cup. Pouring, really simple. You know, uh, I start with them down so that the air flows, or so that it's not getting contamination in there and stuff like that. I don't know how much of a difference it makes, but anything we can do to make things better, let's try it. Pour these probably a quarter to a half an inch deep is what I'm shooting for. It's, you know, obviously eyeballed, so it's a little bit freehand. And, and so it's not very consistent, but we do what we can. Set, these, set the lids on these right away and then set them off to the side. I probably could have gotten better if I had put the caps on them all immediately and then stacked them. Uh, supposedly that's supposed to stop the humidity, humidity on the lids. I did have a fair bit of humidity on the lids here. You know, as expected, you're putting hot liquid into a container and putting lid on it. But uh, later on when you try and see what's going on in there, that humidity could get in the way. Again, I made 25 of these cups. I'm not going to make you watch all 25. Just kind of give you a brief uh, look at how I did it and what the pattern was. Dumping them, getting them all set over there. So 
So here they are, 25 of them. Uh, they all have lids sitting on them, and I'm just kind of pushing them down and making sure they're sealed. Again, if I stacked these earlier, I think I would have came out better. Enjoyed it. Good luck.